Yes, thank you so much for being out here for a very, very exciting day. Uh, it's the first time you can see, I was just mesmerized. I was back there, but um, we're so excited. We're getting very, very close to a dream that we've had for the last couple of years to actually bring Henry Starlight Scoop to fruition. As many of you know, ice cream has been an integral part of Give Kids the World in the Village since the very beginning, since the village was built back in 1989. Of course, Give Kids the World started in 1986. The village opened in 1989 with only eight villas. Fast forward now, 33 years later, oh my goodness, we've got 166 villas and continuing to grow. Uh, but we wanted to find a way, you know, we lost our founder last year, in April of last year, and I've always wanted to find a way to uh, be a testament to his ongoing love and generosity and compassion for the very special children that Give Kids World brings from literally every state and 76 countries around the world. And when you think about Henry's roots and his background and how Give Kids World actually got started, the best way to do it was with a space theme. Uh, we're very excited for so many reasons. Of course, when we very first started, we served ice cream out of an actual caboose. And because of the growth of the village, we had to find several different places for that caboose to go. We finally outgrew the caboose many years ago. And in the late 90s, actually opened the ice cream house. And then, of course, when Henry, uh, you know, we wanted to find a testament to Henry, we decided that we wanted to do something that really highlighted his early career. And as many of you may or may not know, um, Henry was the general manager of the Starlight Motel over on the Cape during those early pioneering days of space exploration. And so all of the original astronauts, except for, unfortunately, Gus Grissom, who had passed away, were um, founding board members of the Kids of World and left their support right up to the very end when we lost the last one this year. We were very supportive, of course, of um, the astronauts, and they stayed in the hotel, and they were a long-term relationship with all of those. Find a way to honor Henry's legacy, the best way to do it was to go back to space. Another reason we're so excited about this project is that, of course, it's the first time that Universal and Walt Disney World have come together creatively to create anything. And I think that's a true testament to the spirit of the village and recognize that there might be a lot of competition outside of the gates of the village, but there's no competition inside. And corporate partners from all over come together, no matter um, if they're competitors on the outside, and do anything that they can to create magical experiences for the village. So when you think about the creative departments of Disney and Universal coming together to create this, it's absolutely incredible. Of course, we want to create a, um, a, an atmosphere where the guests come down and they just get yes, the answer to everything. You want a banana split for breakfast? You want one for dinner? You want one right before you do it? Absolutely. And that's our goal is to create that experience where we can always say yes to these families because so often they're having to hear no throughout. So again, we're excited to unveil it. It looks like right now uh, we are going to be opening hopefully sometime by the end of November. Hopefully to be able to do some hard hat tours throughout. You are the first group that's going to be able to see it. Um, we're going to give you some pictures on the inside and give you an opportunity to tour it. I just want you to picture the building with a 30-foot diameter spaceship on top. And that was actually the first thing that we got donated. A wonderful friend, Barry Kern, who is out of New Orleans and does all of the uh, Mardi Gras floats, not only for New Orleans, but also um, for Universal and around the world, um, who's done so much for us. He created the mushroom top over the carousel and a lot of our icons around here. And I just went to him and I said, I don't know exactly what I'm asking for. I know I need a spaceship. I think it has to be 30 foot diameter. Can you do it? Without asking any other questions, he said, absolutely, we'll do it. Um, he, it's been created over in his warehouses and uh, production facility over in the Philippines. From what I understand, it has been taken apart and is now making its way over here. It just needs a place to land. Um, so we're hoping that very soon we will have a place for it to land. We're so excited that you guys are out here. We have so many wonderful folks who've come together from CMEX, and we've got a list for you of every one of our partners who has helped make this dream a reality. But so excited for you guys to not only be able to take a tour, the very first tour of, the, of Henry Starlight Scoops, but share in our excitement to not only create a wonderful place where the families forever will be able to have ice cream from 7.30 in the morning until 9.30 at night, but also find a way to honor the legacy of our wonderful founder, Henry, and be able to tell this story in a very fun and exciting way. So it was really one of those things where I started thinking about this probably about two or three years ago is uh, thinking about the best way to honor Henry and his legacy and things. Uh, because quite frankly, a lot of the folks he hasn't been engaged even prior to his passing, he hadn't really been around much since probably 1998 or so. So many people didn't 
really know him, maybe he read his book. So it's really important to think about what can we do. We thought just a lot of different things. And then, of course, the icon of the village, besides the castle, is ice cream. Every single child, when you think about what the most favorite part is, is ice cream. And um, so what we did was then I went, of course, to Disney and Universal and said, I want to do something. And uh, I'm not really sure what it is. I didn't have any idea. But I said, if you could kind of put together three concepts and let us choose from what those concepts would be. And um, first of all, getting Disney and Universal to work together. I mean, that's such, I mean, and it wasn't, it wasn't hard at all. I mean, they were both so very excited about coming together to work on this project that's so near and dear to their heart. So that was the first really positive. And they came up with three different scenarios, three different storyboards, if you will. And each one of them was, I mean, it's, I mean, it's just over the top. I mean, they were just absolutely incredible. But then, of course, when we saw this one about space, it just resonated. The other two were great, but you actually had to make up a story. You know how people do stories, and sometimes you have to take a lot of poetic license and write a story about why we picked this theme and how this theme came to be? You didn't have to make up a story for, for the space because it was Henry's story. And so I, it was just it was just like a no-brainer. Um, and so then, you know, we got a lot of folks involved. AECOM is another big partner they're doing. You know, they did all the design and, and those kinds of things. So it's just, that, that was it. I mean, literally, you just look at it and go, no, that's the one. That's the one. And then to see the people like to go to Barry Kern, really, literally, after I got it and said, boy, they've, got, they've designed the spaceship on top. And he said, well, tell me about it. And I said, all I know is it's 30 feet in diameter. He said, okay, we'll do it. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, really, when you can think about it, it's just, amazing what people will do to, to, to be part of this and to remember it and, and, and um, you know, it just goes back. So I don't even know if you know the story because, again, we serve ice cream starting at 7.30 in the morning. So when we did the caboose and when we first opened the ice cream palace, it, we just did it at night because, as you see, most of the families are gone during the day. They're out enjoying the parks. A little bit more down during the summer, you'll see them around the pool and things because uh, we've been to the parks in the middle of the day. <laughs> crazy, like really crazy. Um, so I was actually, so we, when the ice cream palace opened for the longest time, we were just opening it in the evenings, you know, right after dinner. So I was sitting in there one morning, I was actually trying to hide because I had so much work to do. Phones were going crazy, so I said, I need a quiet place just to think. And so I went over to the ice cream palace and I unlocked it and I went in and locked it behind me. And I was just sitting there, just, it was like 7.30 in the morning, I was just trying to get a lot of stuff done. And I heard this little tapping on the window. And I turned around, there's this little boy on his tiptoes, and he said, are you open? And I looked instinctively at my watch, which I can't wear a watch, and so I'm just like, okay, I don't know what time it is, but I said, wow, we, um, sure, come on in, where are your parents first? <laughs> and this is okay. And um, I said, well, what can I get you? And he said, I want a banana split. I said, okay. And so I think by this time, it was like eight o'clock in the morning, and I opened the doors, and once I opened the doors, people just started coming in, literally. I was back there and didn't even have time to like call for help, <laughs> you know, or getting up right. And so I just, I got the team together right after that, kind of everybody by 10 o'clock was out enjoying the parks and stuff, and I said, tomorrow morning, we're starting to open at 7.30 in the morning, we're gonna go straight through till 9.30 at night. And they just embraced it immediately. <laughs> They did, actually. I mean, you know, you could have seen that little boy's face on this little TV because, are you open? How are you going to say no to ice cream? <laughs> and um, so, I mean, it's pretty amazing. And I'm going to tell you a story that's, it's, that it, it shows you exactly what this means because every, you know, we do guest surveys and things. And the one thing, they, they, they love the wonderful feeling that they have in the village. And they're so, the unconditional love and the volunteers and things. And, of course, they like the STAR program. But the one thing that everybody mentions is being able to have ice cream. It's just a treat that they just don't normally get. And, and, and we know they appreciate it, we know that they love it, but we, um, I heard this story about four years ago, and um, of course we've served 175,000 families now, and we don't know the fate of every child. We'd love to think that, you know, you've heard about our little Princess Alyssa, who was here back in 2001 at three years of age, and um, had stage three kidney cancer, a Wilms tumor, and was not, she was on hospice care and wasn't expected survive and she went back she was here over Christmas and she went back and told her doctor if you want to make kids well don't give them shots anymore send them to give kids the world it's magic medicine uh, she's now in her third year at University of, White, of Wisconsin Whitewater 
and she will get up and she'll tell you the reason that she's here today is because Give Kids a World gave her hope. So, you know, and, and we hear other stories like that. That's a pretty amazing story. Um, but we know that there's a lot of times when the child is, is not, is, we're not as fortunate that the faith is the same, but it does give the family some wonderful memories. So this was a story that there was a little girl, she was from um, right outside of Vancouver in Canada. And she was four years old. And they basically they had done everything that they could for this little girl. And so they, the family friend was a minister and they brought the minister over to talk to this little girl. And just kind of just, what's on her mind and he sat down and he said so do you ever think about heaven and um, she looked at him in the living room she looked at him and she says oh I've been there and he said no you know he's trying to explain what heaven is and what maybe her next step would be and she says oh my family and I we've been to heaven and he said you and your family have been to heaven and um, she said yes it's in Florida <laughs> and then she said and do you want to know a secret they let you have ice cream for breakfast so the chances of us ever going away with ice cream for breakfast are, it's not even slim to none, it is to none. Because imagine that family hearing that this child is uh, not afraid because wherever she's going, she thinks it's gonna be just like, it, it is gonna be good kids world and she's gonna be able to have ice cream for breakfast. So you just never know the impact that something like this is gonna have on a child. But just think about that, even though the parents, of course, it doesn't resolve any of their grief and the heartache about, I can't even imagine losing a child. But for them, knowing that their child isn't afraid because they think they've already been to heaven and they're just going to go back to a place that they love. So that's really, in addition to the significance of having it be about Henry and being a tribute to him um, and his early days in that space, it's also a tribute to those children who think about this experience and what they remember is the habit and it just brings them so much joy.